The title of my presentation today is Climate Change and Its Impact on Cryosphere and Water Resources of Hindu Kush Himalayan Region. I am Arun Svesta from International Center for Integrated Mountain Development and I am speaking from Kathmandu, Nepal. First, let me provide some introduction to the Hindu Kush Himalayan region. This region extends from Afghanistan to Myanmar and it includes uh, the Hindu Kush Mountains, the Karakoram, the Himalaya and the Tibetan Plateau. Hindu Kush Himalaya region due to its vertical and horizontal size is one of the most prominent physiographic feature on the surface of Earth. The climate of the region is dominated by a monsoon circulation system. The southeasterly wind during summer and westerly wind during winter brings a large amount of moisture into this region. In high altitude, the moisture is deposited in the form of snow cover. And with time, a part of the snow cover gets converted into glacier ice. The region has the uh, highest concentration of snow cover and glacier besides the two poles and therefore it is often called the third pole. The milk water generated from the snow cover and glaciers of Hindu Kumskus Himalayan region provides water to 10 major river basins in the region and these are Indus, Ganges, Brahmaputra, Irdavati, Salween, Mekong, Yangche, Yellow, Tari, and Amudarya. And it is estimated that the water supplied from the mountain uh, sustains livelihoods of about 1.3 billion people living within the basin, uh, within the Hedgecage region, and beyond. Now, let me uh, briefly present some evidences of climate change in the Hindukus Himalayan region. Let me start with temperature trends in Nepal. The country for this purpose was divided into five uh, physiographic zones with progressively higher elevations. Uh, the country in general is experiencing high warming rate in last uh, few decades. And these rates are much higher than the global average warming rate. The other point that we get from this analysis is that um, the warming in the high altitude is much higher compared to low elevation regions of the country. Next I present results from Tibetan Plateau and on this slide warming rates are plotted against the station elevation. This study showed in a much clearer manner that there is a very strong relationship between warming rates and uh, station elevation. Finally on uh, temperature trends, uh, this slide presents temperature trends over the Hindukus Himalayan region. And in this study, the Hindukus Himalayan region was subdivided into three zones. First, the area below 1000 meter, second, between 1000 and 4000 meter, and third, above 4000 meter. And again, it is clear that warming in the higher altitude region, for example, the 1000 to 4000 and above 4000 meter zones are much higher than in the lower elevation region. Uh, it is clear from those evidences that higher elevation regions are warming much rapidly and perhaps are more sensitive to climate change. Now let us discuss about uh, climate change on water sector. Cryosphere is an important part of uh, Himalayan environment and therefore in this climate change impact uh, schema, cryosphere is given a central role. Now, first of all, climate change happens in, in terms of temperature change, precipitation change and other changes in atmospheric parameters. But the first order of change happens in the cryosphere. And these are deglaciation, change, perennial snow cover decline and decline in permafrost. Now, these primary impacts cause several second order impacts. And the first one I would like to mention is glacial lake formation and growth, which is directly linked to deglaciation. Glacial lake can grow to a certain extent and then can burst out, causing what we know as glacial lake outburst flood or GLOP in short. 
that is one impact I would like to mention. The other one, due to changes in uh, cryosphere and in combination with changes in wetland, uh, changes in atmospheric parameters, temperatures, precipitations and so on can cause changes in the hydrological regime which can be in the form of drought, floods, flash floods or in the change of hydrological uh, timing or the shift in hydrograph. All these impacts can cause sectoral impacts, for example in water resource, in uh, irrigation and other sectors, which in turn and ultimately impact human well-being in the region. This is a very simplistic view of a very complicated climate change impact chain. Uh, I have mentioned primarily only two impacts, one is GLOF and another is hydrological regime change. And I will elaborate on those in subsequent slides. But first, let me show you some examples of deglaciation in the region. This is Rika Samba Glacier in central Himalaya in Nepal. This glacier has been retreating quite rapidly in the past. And the retreat rate has been somewhere around 20 meters per year. Another example, this is Glacier AX010 in eastern Nepal Himalaya. Again, the retreat of glacier is quite obvious from the pictures shown here, taken in different years. Another example from Nepal, again the glacier retreat is quite obvious. Last example from Nepal, as you can see, the glacier has completely vanished in the year 2004. There are abundant examples of deglaciation in the region, similar to what has happened in Nepal. In this slide, I show example from Gangotri Glacier, the headwater of Ganges, and it shows quite dramatic retreat of glacier terminus in various times. In the graph, I show glacier dynamics in the Tibetan Plateau. Now, glaciers in the Tibetan Plateau have been classified into three categories, uh, stationary, advancing and retreating. And from this graph it is clear that the number of retreating glaciers are getting more and more with time. It has to be noted that while deglaciation is a widespread phenomena in the Hindu Kush Himalayan region, there are some exceptions. There are some glaciers showing advancing nature, but these are quite few in numbers and are concentrated in the Hindukus and Karakoram regions. Now I will talk about glacial lake outburst flood and this is the main topic of my presentation. This is a schematic representation of glacial lake environment. The lake was the direct result of deglaciation. Now the glacier was formerly in a more advanced position but now it has retreated to this position. The lake water is surrounded by moraine dam, which is formed by loose materials deposited by the glacier. The whole environment surrounding the lake is quite fragile. If the moraine dam breaks due to any region, the lake water will escape at a very high speed and can cause tremendous damage in the downstream areas. These are some studies conducted by in easy mode in past years. According to our study, there have been 35 GLOF events in the past in the region. About 25 GLOF events have impacted Nepal and 10 of them originated in the Tibet but had significant impact in Nepal. And from our study we have found that there are more than 200 potentially dangerous glacial lakes in the Hindu Kush Himalayan region. These are the locations of the potentially dangerous glacial lakes in Hindu Kush Himalayan region. In this and next few slides, I will try to demonstrate the extent of damages GLOF events can cause. This one is called Chanjambo GLOF, which was caused by outburst of Jangjangjo Glacial Lake in Tibet. In fact, Jangjangjo Lake burst out twice in 1964 and 1981. The 1981 GLOF caused tremendous damage not only in Tibet but also in Nepal. The picture shows 
remnant of one of the many bridges destroyed by the glove. After the glove, the bridge was reconstructed at a much higher elevation. The another example is Dixo Glove, which occurred in 1985 and damaged nearly completed Namche hydropower in the famous Kumbu Everest region of Nepal. The impact was so severe in the local area that it caused major setback to the economy of the Everest region. This picture shows the impact of Dixo Glove. Dixo Lake Moraine before and after the glove and the Namche hydropower site before and after the glove. This is an example of a very small glove in Nepal where a sizable lake was even not identified from any sources. And it is suspected that a series of small supraglacial ponds drained out and caused the glove. Nevertheless, the outburst caused some damage locally in the villages located downstream. This is the final example of glove and in this case a lake called Tampu Pokhari which busted out in 1998 caused damages in that area. The picture was taken before the glove event. Ice avalanche from the steep glacier behind the lake caused a tremendous overflow of the lake water over the moraine dam, eroded the moraine dam and caused the glove. And in the Hindu Kush Himalayan region, ice avalanche is one of the major reasons triggering the glove events. This is Chorolpa Glacial Lake in Rolwaling area of Nepal. This is the largest glacial lake in Nepal, much larger than Dikchu or Tampokhari, and is considered to be the most dangerous glacial lake in Nepal. This slide shows the history of growth of the Chorolpa Lake. What was some small supraglacial ponds in the 1950s coalesced and became a sizable glacial lake in the 60s. The lake then rapidly grew and in 2002 the lake area was 1.76 km square. If this lake breaks out, it can cause more damage than Dikcho, Janzangbo or Tampokari. This is because of the size of the lake and the volume of water stored in the lake and also due to large number of settlements, infrastructures uh, downstream of the lake which are exposed to the flood. Realizing high risk of glove from Choropa, a glove mitigation project was implemented. The project consisted of cutting an open channel through, through the moraine dam and draining the lake water so that the lake level uh, reduces by 3 meters. These are some views of the project being implemented. Because the project site had no uh, road access, all the heavy equipment had to be airlifted to the site and assembled at the site. This is the project site after the project was completed. This is one unique Example in the Himalaya region where mitigation measure against glove was implemented at this scale. But there are far too many uh, potentially dangerous glacial lakes in the region and this slide shows distribution of potentially dangerous glacial lake in the surrounding of Nepal and location of existing or in the pipeline hydropower projects in Nepal. And as it can be seen, almost all of the hydropower projects are in the risk of glob. Realizing the importance of this subject, EC mode has embarked on a regional glob risk assessment. This is a flow chart showing the main steps in the assessment and is also called a stepwise approach. The approach considers desk study using GIS and remote sensing, hydrological modeling, and various types of field-based studies. This is one of the steps in the assessment in which computer models are used to simulate a glove and based on this potential glove impact areas are identified. The blue area represents inundation area and drag on satellite image it shows part of a village called Dingboche 
which can be directly impacted by the glob. And this is the same village Dingboche on a photograph. Now let me shift to another topic that is impact on hydrology and water resources. As the warming continues, glacial mass will decline and there will be change in water discharges in the rivers, initially increasing and later decreasing. This phenomenon is depicted here in a highly conceptual manner, but there are a lot of uncertainties. Uncertainty in how the climate is going to behave, uncertainty in how the glacier mass will change and of course uncertainty on how the changes in hydrological regime will occur. So there are many questions and these are because of challenging environment, limited baseline information, limited awareness and low capacity in the region to tackle with those questions. Now if milk water is going to be reduced, it is not only the whole story. The other part is socio-economic changes. The demand for water is also going to increase in the future. So, this is going to create some sort of conflict in the future. On one hand, water is reducing. On the other hand, demand is increasing. So, the conflicts could be of various nature. It could be rural and urban, human and ecosystem, upstream, downstream, and between different sectors. This is generally true, but the impacts are different across the whole region. There are some areas where the impacts can be more severe, and these areas are naturally water stress area. The problem might be not as important in naturally water abundant areas as compared to naturally water stressed areas. The Hindukus, Karakoram, and Western Himalayas are more arid compared to the eastern regions and these are more sensitive to water related stresses. Meltwater form about 80% of the river flow in the upper Indus basin in Pakistan. The greenery shown in this picture from upper Hunza is due to water supply from a traditionally maintained complicated system of irrigation. Any land without irrigation would practically be, be dry and barren in this region. Many of these canals draw water directly from glaciers and even slight glacial retreat can hinder the water supply. The picture in the right represents a village is in Upper Hunja, Pakistan which experienced water shortage due to glacial retreat. And the people living here abandoned the settlement because of this and resettled somewhere else. The evidences show that climate change is already occurring in the Hindukush Himalayan region and maybe in a relatively faster rate. The cryosphere is experiencing the impact in the form of snow cover decline, deglaciation and cryospheric de decline. While this could cause many problems, two major impacts I focused on today's presentations were formation and growth of glacial lake and another is changes in the hydrological regime. Glacial Lake outburst flood is a visible and high impact phenomenon, while changes in hydrological regime takes place at a slow pace. Although at a longer term, it could also have high impact to people and livelihood. Climate has the potential to cause risk to a vast number of people living in the Hindu Himalayan region, their properties and livelihoods. Thank you.